live from YMSL Studios. Welcome to the Doug Less Report. I'm your host, Bobby Moravia, with uh, NRJ, who just uh, came in from the airport. And uh, Norman, that custom never gets uh, never gets easy. Never gets easy, no matter how famous you are, no matter how well you represent a country. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's the time we live in. Um, you got to go through customs, got to do the immigration. Uh, but Bobby, all kidding aside, what a week yeah. in the YMSL. Every yeah. single game yeah. had action. I don't even know where you want to start. Well, the action was not even on the field, it was off the field also. Yes, a lot of off the field. I don't even know where you want to begin. There was so much. Every, yeah. every time I called the team to ask them about what happened in yeah. their game, it was an hour-long conversation. Yeah, there was a lot of stuff, and as we mentioned. And also, we had a lot to discuss uh, this week, as you know. Friday, uh, 6 p.m. Eastern Time is the uh, trade deadline. Yes. And a lot of activity I'm uh, hearing things, going yeah. on. And uh, this is the first time I'm hearing that uh, captains are actually on the trading block. Themselves. Really? Yeah. I hope that's not me. <laughs> <laughs> captains are calling <laughs> and saying, please get me off my team. <laughs> so, so it's going to be... Uh, you know, it's a very interesting. We have three one and five teams, which I've never seen in, uh, right. in this time in a long, long time. So uh, that's going to be also interesting. And also, we're going to talk about uh, the injuries. A lot of injuries in the YMSL, yep. and, uh, especially in the uh, in the pitching, uh, you know, amount. So well, any year there's a World Baseball Classic. We always like to yeah. watch, you know, about the injuries. And a lot of people that represented their countries are. Feeling the injury bug, yeah. so I think there is something to that. All of a sudden, the names Red and Moses are very prevalent. Everyone's <laughs> asking, "How do I have Red on my team?" <laughs> Which, by the way, what is the rule with Red and Moses? Are they on a team? Can they pitch for a team? Is it well, injury? What is it? You know, Red, as we mentioned the, in the draft, Red they're basically floaters, meaning any team that has a need for pitching, they can uh, they can have them for the short period or whatever the case may be. But now. Uh, Red came in the other day, got a victory from uh, Ike Mavora. Uh, yeah. And, and, you know, and, uh, got him back from behind, and they pulled out a victory. So maybe they might, uh, you know, give him uh, instead of the ten-day contract, they might sign him for the rest of the year. Right. Okay. Now, what if two or three teams need a pitcher in the same week? Well, Red's going to be making a lot of money. Right. <laughs> okay. Not bidding, you know. All right. I mean, I I go both ways because Red and Moses have both been in the league forever. Yeah. On the other hand, when you're drafting, you got to draft a deep team in case right. someone gets yeah, injured yeah, yeah. or whatever. And Red uh, and Moses are uh, still on the shelf, not not uh, recuperating from off-season shoulder surgery. So, uh, right. you know, he's a few weeks away. Um, so, uh, you know, right, Red, Red is a hot topic right now. Red is a hot topic. Um, all right, where are we starting? Okay, There's well, so much action. All right, let's start off Memorial 1. and uh, Featured the, game. Featured game. Now, we had the 2-2 two and two all-in team. Uh... Maurice Haber's team versus the one and three Pirates. Right. And uh, the Pirates, I'll tell you one thing, every week it's a different situation with this team as far as their, uh, their roster. Uh, having uh, this week, they only played with nine guys, mm -hmm. two guys traveling. Uh, Jaime Sham had the flu uh, this week, but ended up coming uh, under the circumstances. I got to say something because I wasn't here last week, which I apologize to the viewers. Jaime Shama last week against us played hell of a shortstop. Yeah. I've been very hard on him. He was a great teammate to his team. He played yeah. shortstop. He was like one of their stars in, in yeah. that split against the Expos. And he back uh, to this week. And not, but not only that, he's been hitting this year. He's, he he's he hit hitting, well against us. Hitting, I think over 400, which he's not really known for his bat. So he's mm -hmm. definitely and he came. He was uh, battling the flu, and they didn't have enough guys. He came, but then David Simhorn, who's usually when he's at the games, it's MIA. Now he's actually, uh, actually <laughs> MIA, you know, so physically and mentally. So he was not there, so they had nine guys again. So Joe Cheer has been battling all these, uh, you know, the week before it was Jordy, and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, he had the guys out of position. So, um, you know, they came in, so they had, uh, you know, nine guys playing with no short center fielder, and, uh, you know, Maurice's team with a very powerful lineup. But they were also short handed this week because Leo wasn't available. Cassin and they had um, the Wabe got his first start since the, uh, the end of last year, pitched right. both games at doubleheader. And uh, we have to say also before we start, a shout out to Esther Haber yeah. for allowing Maurice to play two games uh, this week. He was okay. at a wedding in Rhode Island. Yep. And uh, she wanted him to go. She came to this field, sat in her car. Uh, to go on a shopping spree at the mall, you know, right. to cost Maurice to, to have her uh, <laughs> come to the game. Uh, but um, nonetheless, he stayed both games, and uh, and they pulled out a victory. We're going to talk about 
Game one, um, he spoke to Maurice to get the details on that. Oh, well, well, game one sounds like a ho home game <laughs> that they just out hit them, and it, but there wasn't anything that significant. The, the big guys stepped up. And uh, I, what was the final score in game one? 9 3. No, nothing to really report over there. Yeah. Game two is the game that the entire league is talking about yeah. because the Pirates, who at this point were 1 and 4, yeah. must win situation, got an early lead and held on to it till the seventh inning. The Pirates were up 5 0. 5 0 in the seventh yeah. inning. Yeah. Let me repeat that. 5 0 in the seventh inning. And they got the first guy out, Jack, at the top of the Jack order. Abadi Jack Abadi let off. They had a meeting yeah. before the inning, a whole rah rah meeting or whatever. Jack Abadi let off. He got out. Then they got a single, a double. A.B. Dweck hit a two run homer to get the score to 5 4. Then Maurice's son was up, Jackie Haber, and he had a ground ball, and this was a controversial call. They called him safe at first base. Yeah, apparently um, it was a ground ball to Richter. He had the ball in his glove. He reached out and touched first the glove and, uh, you know, looked out from what I'm hearing. Apparently the umpire saw it differently and uh, called him safe. Which I think was even before the, the A.B. Uh, Dweck's two run over. I think it was still 5-0, 5-1 at the time. Okay. So it, made, it would have been the second out, one guy on. And, you know, it was, it was a very, it was a turning point at the inning, obviously. Then A.B. Dweck got a, got a homer to make it 5-4. Mm -hmm. Then uh, they got a, a couple of hits, and I forgot, I don't know who drove in that run. Uh, it was Ralph Matute got the... Uh, oh, Ralph Matute got the tying yeah. hit. Again, Ralph Matute had a huge week this week, and turning into the uh, steal of the draft. Late, you know, late pick, Ralph Matu came up huge. But I, I heard a lot of people talking about this call, but you gave up a five-run lead in the last inning. Yeah. You can't tell me about a little ground ball to first that, that call went either way. I mean, yeah. th th there were doubles, there were home runs, there were a bunch of base hits yeah. after there was one out in the inning. So all in came down from 5 nothing in a game they probably thought they had no shot of winning yeah. they were probably settled with a with a split and i think the pirates i, I will not say this about all one in five teams this team is done after a loss <laughs> like that i mean I, I don't think they could come back from blowing a 5 nothing lead in the last inning especially when there was some sort of controversy we should note that all in tied the game in that inning and then they went into extra yeah, innings and won it the next inning. inning yeah you know when you tie it up that it's very hard to recover and win the game after that so yeah uh, devastating devastating loss um, um again but they almost pulled it out shorthand you know i want to see this team with a you know full roster i week. think it's too late by the time they get the full roster i hate to say well, it. you know they're a sweep away now but i, I think at the same token they are playing the one in five hurricanes this week cool. yeah our story for uh, we're gonna get to later. I know that might even be in a worse situation. That than, team, the wheels are coming off from what I'm hearing yeah. in Miami over there. Yeah, and uh, so that that team really, so they're playing them this week. All of a sudden, you're three and five. You don't know what the you know things could definitely uh, change in a hurry. But now you're seeing Jaime Sham at third, Jordy at short, whatever they might even. So it's a very good uh, left side of the infield. Richter at second, at first rather. So, you know, they got they need all their pieces. That's the bottom line. They need all their pieces you know. and then they left themselves with very little margin for error. You know, if they yeah. if they were two and four, then they're a sweep away from being five hundred. Yeah. It's a whole different story. That loss not just that they're one and five, the way right. they lost that game is very, very hard yeah. to come back from. Um and all the now all of a sudden all in is sitting very pretty and now all of a sudden you look at their lineup, uh it, it is uh is a very powerful lineup, uh, when you see it uh Henry Malak, Maurice Haber. It's a very, very strong lineup. Um, Henry alone is a, Dweck, is a top yeah. performer. You throw in Jimmy Malak yeah, there, Malak. who's having another great year. Um, also, you get a steal like uh, like Ralph Matute now, you know, and uh, so their lineup is uh, is very, very good. And uh, you know, obviously, if, uh, yeah, but they're gonna have they've been having problems with their pitching situation, which is something gonna have to be addressed. Leo walked twelve guys last week. Boab had a lot of walks this year. And it's funny they took Leo because they want their pitcher. Remember yeah. they reached yeah. him in the fourth round. Right. Everyone questioned it, but they were right in that they had a lineup because they already had Jimmy, they already had Henry, they already had Jack, and they already had Maurice. Right. So they already had a very good lineup. So they said let's go get the pitcher. Now the pitcher they got is walking the ballpark. Right. So. We'll see what happens. Maybe, uh, maybe but, uh, our sources uh, over at the ESPN Radio are telling us that uh, Maurice Haber placed a call to A.B. Jeff Cohen 
for the uh, services of Jeffrey Sacka. No! And uh, quickly heard the dial tone. Right. right after that, so... I gotta tell you, Jeffrey Sacka pitched yeah. unbelievable this yeah, week. Yeah. The guy had maybe seven strikeouts. That was actually a 9-10, I think. Yeah. Was it really? Yeah, it was 9-10. <laughs> it, it, it was wild how hard Jeffrey was throwing and, and accurate. Very few walks. I don't have the stats in front of me. I don't know, but I was there, obviously. I played against yeah. him. This guy was humming yeah, this week. Uh, he mentioned last night that uh, he, it's probably the best stuff he's had in years. And he had Did two, he say uh, that? He had two losses to show for. Yeah, I mean, well, the first loss was probably as tough of a oh, loss gonna get to that as one, a team uh, can get. <laughs> Are we ready to go there yet or no? Uh, because... Uh, yeah, you know we're trying to uh, we're trying to hear from some of the uh, pirate uh, players and, uh, and you know maybe the uh, uh, somebody from All In to get the their version of that inning. Yeah, I mean personally, I'll tell the Pirates. I, I spoke to Eddie Hakim before the year. He he loved his team. He loved his chances. I really think I, I can't stress it enough. I I thought the Pirates were a good team when when I played them, but. After a loss like that, I really think they're done. I yeah. hope they don't pack it in. I hope they show up with a full team and, and prove uh, me wrong. Yeah, so they need one week of having the whole team there. That's and all. see what they can do. That's all. They haven't had that yet. Once again, our number is 732-596-7555 or 732-596-7525. And um, so, uh, as we mentioned, uh, you know, the uh, all four... Uh, you know, Maurice is very happy, obviously, with a four and two uh, start, and uh, you know, so uh, they're right in the, in the thick of things. And now the one and five teams are going to be struggling. Now over to Memorial Two, <laughs> which uh, was Steven. obviously uh, the Expos coming in against yep. the one and three Braves, who uh, I've you know, it's been all about pitching and uh, defense and zero offense. Yeah, I mean, they really you look at their. Lineup and their batting average is across the board. It's in the you know threes and the, some mm -hmm. guys in the twos. AB Cohen struggling at uh, you know about two thirty one I think, and Irwin struggling and uh, so um, oh we got a call coming in. AB Cohen, all right. Our we phones are not even. Let's let's. Uh, AB, you're on the air. How's it going, Norm? Hey, how are you, Bob? Hi, how you doing, uh, Amy? We're just uh, about to delve into your uh, matchup uh, over there at Memorial Two, and uh, uh, obviously a very uh, disappointing uh, uh, game, especially uh, the way Game One ended. Yeah, I mean, you know, you come into that week, you, you just got swept, and you're looking for something powerful, something to sort of begin the season on, and that week, that that loss was probably the worst possible way you can sort of continue with the season and, you know, could it be more disappointing? Uh, the most, I guess, you know, I was curious to know what was your uh, feeling of that so I go behind the plate, what, what do you think? Well, let's tell the viewers what happened. We didn't even uh, discuss the game yet. Uh, it was a four. Uh, the the You guys are up four to one. The Braves are up four to one oh. in the last inning. Top yeah. of the seventh. Yeah. And, uh, so the Expos had the top of the inning, down four to one with two outs, with the right. seven, eight, nine coming up. With all right, so let, let, let me let's start from the beginning. Sorry, Ed. four to one Braves, seven, eight, nine coming up in the last inning. Yeah. Okay. Couple of guys get on now. Carlos Sabati is up with two outs, down four to one. He rips a base hit to score two runs. Really? Okay. Two runs scored in first. Okay. Now AB Cohen, the center fielder, threw the ball home. Instead of throwing a second, allowed Carlos to go to second. So a little mistake right. on your part there, Abe. Gotta gotta say that. Allowed Carlos to go to second. Again, there's two outs now. It's four to three. David Richie comes up, base hit. Ties it up. Ties it up. All clean hits for all. Um, Richie actually went to second on the play to the plate. Alley gets intentionally walked. Leaves a carrier again with two outs, base hit. So we took a five four lead. Oh, wow. In dramatic fashion. In dramatic, dramatic yeah. fashion. Now their team comes up, last licks. They have a man on third with one out. Who was up? Man on third, man on first and third with one out. Erwin, my brother, is up. Okay, so uh, Erwin hits a ball like a like a line drive uh, to left field. It was like sort of like a uh, rising yeah. line drive. No, Jordan Mal, no, Jordan Mal, your brother had to actually reach for the ball if I remember correctly. Yeah. Reach for the ball. I actually, I think Jeffrey was coaching today. I told Jeffrey before. I, I told him, make sure Joe. Uh, Jacob Trout does not leave early. I know Jason. I know how he could be. Cannot do like that. Actually, that back before my brother.
brother got up. He came up to me and said, oh, God, this game, I'm not letting this game go to Texas. Then, earlier, the deep, deep flight home. Do you remember him saying that? You're behind the plate. Well, he was saying throughout the day, um, which is very common with umpires, I just got to be truthful. He was saying, all right, we got a Nick game at one, we got to get out of here, but nothing at, at the point until this happened that should ever be taken seriously, you know? Well, but, I, was, I was walking, I was going to talk to Jeffrey at third, he turned around when he was behind the plate, he turned around and told me, I'm not letting this game go into that training, this game is not going into that training. That's what I remember, and, you know, everyone in the round the batter's box remembered him saying that, and then Aaron hit the bomb to left field, Joe actually jumped, caught the ball, it was almost over his head, actually, if I remember. Yeah, it was like a line drive that was like sort of still rising, it's hard to explain, it was a bullet, Joseph bullet. caught the ball yeah. over his head like this, line drive, and then threw the ball back into the infield, Jacob tagged up and scored, and so now it's 5 all. And then we appealed the play to third, and he was called out on appeal at third base. Thinking, God forbid, that uh, what he got to lose is not the, you know. Game over. Yeah. No, yeah. Mikey actually yeah. saw. But the biggest the, problem we have is that the, it wasn't even contested at home. You know, it's usually you'll call the guy out if it's a contested call. Right, right. A close call. I think Joe, Joe, Joe actually threw the ball into second base to keep the runner from going to second. You know, there's a winning runner from going to second. So it was just like mind blowing. You know, how did the umpire call that to end the game? It was, it was, it was crazy. Well, you're saying Mikey thought he left early? I mean, Mikey says he definitely. Mikey's the one that saw it. I, I honestly was not looking, so I can't say. Jacob swears to God he did not leave early. <laughs> Yeah. And but a few, I think Mikey was the one that saw it right away and said he left early, and and he I mean, positive he left early. But your honest, point is, so Mikey was screaming from the second the ball hit, hit left the bat. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, I don't know if it's legitimate. Yeah. I think it's like this is like a common thing in this league. Whenever there's a, a sacrifice fly, there's always an appeal play. And I, I don't know, to but, me, if there's no bearing, I don't know why you would make a call like that if it had no bearing on the play. I mean, I'll be honest with you, I did not like that the call was made when there was no play at the plate. I didn't think that that call should be made. And I am in the minority on my team. Most people on my team are saying, it's, we're all adults, we all know how to play baseball. If you, if you leave early, you leave early. Okay, and you're 20 that, years but old, if they were on the other end receiving that, they would not be, uh, be I, saying that. To me, a game can end on an appeal, but there was no play at the plate. Right. There was not even a play on, on the plate. So I, I didn't like how the game ended personally, you know? That's that's just my opinion. No, and, and, you know, to call it, maybe it's just one out, to call it one out, but to end the game that way, it was just... Yeah, I, I don't know. The whole thing was that. just... Uh, it, it, it's a very, very rough way to lose. Um, I The Braves were going crazy, I understand that. Um, they they took it out on the uh, umpire. They were very classy. Yeah, actually, that they didn't... I actually had to run to, up and field to Bobby to get yeah. my call, cool, otherwise it would have been... Right. Now, at the same time, that was, you know, you, you did also give up a 4-1 lead in the last inning. Right. You know, so... Yeah. It, it's... You guys, you guys, uh, you know, you had an unbelievable comeback. We weren't expecting that at all. You know, yeah, it was 9-10 hitters. Yeah. I think it was 9-10 hitters coming up first and second in that inning. We, we totally weren't expecting that. Uh, but, yeah, but, you know, that's what happened in the softball. Run, you know, people score runs at the yeah. end of the game. You saw the Pirates game, but... The position we wanted to be in was tie game, two outs, and then I was coming up next. So that call really, you know, totally blew up my mind. Right. All right, <laughs> AB, uh, where do we go from here now with your uh, team? You're one in five. The trading deadline this week. Uh, you did, need did, offense. Uh, did Maurice actually call you to trade Jeffrey Saka? <laughs> Imagine if it was, I think it was one o'clock this afternoon. I'm in the middle of work. Maurice calls me. He's like, listen, I have, I have, I have a trade. I, you know, I think you could. We can make blockbuster today, but we have to keep it confidential. <laughs> and he goes, uh, so what are you willing to give up for death for? I, said, I pretty much laughed. I said, no shot. He said, all right. And I hung up the phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he said it was a pretty short conversation. So, uh, <laughs> but uh, Amy's... Uh, I would like to know what other people that were not in the game, not on the Expos, not on the Rays, I'd like to know what people think. If, let's, say, let's say he left early, which Jacob is saying he did not. But let's say he left early. Do you think that call should be made when there was no play at the plate? Or do you think the rule is the rule and he no, should be called out? I don't out? buy that. If it has no bearing on the play and if it's like, a, you know, a drive, if he left, let's say, uh, 
three seconds earlier where he's down the line and a short fly ball and stand. But why put themselves in this position? I keep saying that why do the umpires insist on being uh, putting themselves this and then letting everything explode and they and they say these guys are hotheads? I right. mean, just if had no bearing, that's it. Let the game go with the extra innings. But Jason yeah. has a barbecue every week, and he's not eating turkey burgers when he goes to these barbecues. And uh, Now, Bobby, so. you came to the game in between games, and, and you had an outburst of your own. You uh, you went on a rant again, Jason. Yeah, I've had a rant, because this yeah. has been going on for years already. He goes there, and he wants to leave. You know, and he's lazy, and he's overweight, and he's slow, and he doesn't have his... Uh, He's a pathetic uh, umpire. So he could, it's, it sounds like he's not going to be umping any games. He's not seeing anything in this league again. And if he wow. has, uh, there's no way the game's going on. So. And oh, my God. It's huh? funny. We were talking to our umpire after the game. And he said, listen, if he's just a uh, runner left early, he'd never make that call. Try it again. Yeah. And, of course, when they go to the other ump for help, they're never going to show up to the other ump. They're going to say, no, I, I didn't see anything. Right. You know. So right. whatever it is. But, uh, you know, I just hope... Uh, you know, you guys are going to be able to rebound from this because it's not a good way to, you know, for yeah. to go. Yeah, we've been talking as a team all week, and, you know, we feel, still feel that we're, we're, we're a very deep team. We have talent in every position, and, you know, we have all the right parts, and every pitching lights out. So it's just a matter of time for us to peak. And I've been on teams, like I was at most Channel one year, with the 0-6, I think, you know, made it to the World Series. Last year, my brother's team was 2-6, made it to the World Series. So... It's way too early in the season to really tell right. which teams. And like you guys were talking about, we're one sweep away from being right in the middle of the pack. So, it's, you know, I'm very confident in my team. I'm not really looking to make any moves. I think this team for a reason. So, you know, I think we're going to make a, a real run and we're going to have a good chance. At yeah, it. well, all you guys just got to start hitting a little bit. And, uh, you know, your defense is there and obviously the pitching is there. So, hopefully it starts this week. And, Avi, thanks for calling in. We appreciate it. Thanks a lot, guys. All right. We got a call coming in from the West Bank. Jamile. <laughs> Jamile. Cole has oh, got to turn his radio down, I think. Jimmy, are you there? Are you there, Jamile? Not there. Oh, okay. Must die. Anyway, yeah. this one in five team is a completely different story than the Pirates, in my opinion. Yeah. I don't know who they're playing next week, but I think they're ready to, you know, string a few wins together and uh, and make a go. run because this this is probably one of the best one in five teams I've seen in a while. You know, so. Um, Jeffrey Sack is pitching as well as I ever remember him pitching. Yeah. Like we mentioned, he had maybe nine strikeouts. Um, let's see who they're playing next week. Braves are playing the White Sox. Oh, next that's going to be a good matchup. It's a good matchup. They have a yeah. very powerful. Very interview. good lineup. The Braves have to start hitting the ball better. They have guys that can they hit. They start hitting, yeah, period. AB and yeah. Irwin have to they put have to in be their the, part. The table setters there. You know? yeah. And also, the field in game two of the Braves, we won game two, it was a very ho hum game, six to two. Their fielding fell apart in game two. Um, Sam Michon hit a long home run uh, in game one, but in game two, he had a very rough time in the field. Um, I guess it happens, and uh, after that tough loss in game one, right. maybe. But, uh, yeah, as we mentioned, I, it's almost impossible to rebound to win game two yeah. uh, after losing a game like that. Yeah, well, and they, especially that they blew a four-one lead in the seventh. That's a uh, you know that's right. a tough loss. That's the part that got overshadowed in, yeah. in all this uh, in all this hoopla. Yeah, so uh, Al, so Ali, actually David Richie was batting second. David Richie was batting second because Sonny was sick oh, as a dog. Sick, Sonny showed up. up. You got to give him a ton of credit. He called he me very early up, in the yeah. morning that he's sick. He can't make it. But like, I don't know what we're going to do without Sonny. He's our left fielder. Sonny showed up. He was white as a ghost. Yeah. You know, he's a trooper for even coming. He could not stand up. So we put Bub from, left, from right to left. And at the end of the sixth inning, they had bases loaded when they were up 4-1. On a slicing ball into foul territory, Bub made a sliding catch to keep it at four to one. So by keeping that game at four to one, that's how we were able to come back. So right. a huge, huge play in left field by Bub. Okay, we got a call coming in from the Colel. Albert, you're on the air. How you doing, guys? Hi, how are you? Albert, it must be Albert Gamal from uh, from Pittsburgh. From, from the one in five Pirates. <laughs> ah, boy, we hear we hear the sound in your voice, Albert. Yes, sir. You know what's really hurting me the most is that triple moment hit last week. That was really uh, stinging. How do you blow a 5 nothing lead in the last inning? 
Let's talk about your triple, Bob. Come on. <laughs> I'll talk about it for the whole show. I'll talk about my triple. <laughs> where where I'll, exactly? I'll tell you about my triple. Some guy from left field started <laughs> screaming, move in, move in, and then he got burnt with a line drive over center field. <laughs> Uh, where was the center fielder playing exactly? He was playing short center because his left fielder he moved him in. The <laughs> because some idiot in left field was mispositioning him. Yeah, I, I don't know who that guy was. I don't know either. <laughs> so Albert, all kidding aside, the team's one in five. Uh, you know, we were talking about it earlier. Just every week, it's been a, a di different situation with key guys not showing up. What's the mindset of your organization now? I mean, are you de dejected? Is everybody still on the same page? I think everyone's still on the same page. We uh, we were kind of banking on our offense to uh, carry us, and that hasn't clicked yet either. Like you said, we were we were a couple of guys down this week. You know, we we actually found out from Sim one. He didn't realize till nine thirty that he had a game that he was going to be on a plane going to Florida. So he let us know oh. game. Game day. He also and, came uh, late week one when you were on Memorial 3. He didn't know what time the game yeah. started. What is going on with this guy this yeah. year? Well, one time last year he didn't come because he didn't know it was Sunday. It was, uh, well, what what he, is up with him? He showed up on Monday. Uh, our championship hopes are not hinging on David Timmel. <laughs> we have other things to uh, take care of. So, so, top of the water has got to deliver. We're not hitting, we're not driving in runs, we're not getting, you know, big rallies. You know, we got to strengthen our lights. You know, our defense has been a little, you know, porous. We're not, we're not doing what we need to do to win. Well, I think now if you got Jaime back at third, right? And uh, Jordy at short, it's, uh, you know, now you guys... Jaime's playing gold level, gold, gold glove level defense this year, really. Yeah. Unbelievable. He now, what happened, what happened with him? Because after week one, we were hearing he didn't want to play on the team. And then when we showed up week two, the guy was a star. I don't know. You asked Jaime. I have no idea what's going on. But the guy's chilling. I don't know. He's home months this week. He's running to third. He got the flu. He was rolling. Yeah, so do you, you still have confidence that Meyer is, uh, he's been uh, holding up his end of the bargain, right? Meyer, I don't know what it is. I, I think if you look at the stats, and I, I did like, I, I counted it up in my head. I think we gave up like 30, 40% of our runs have happened in the first inning of the game. Yeah. It's, you can't win like that. We gave up seven runs in the second game to the Expos, which is ridiculous. Yeah, in the first so inning. We could have had a better game. We gave up like... I took eight runs in the first two games against the, of the first inning against the Bad News Bears. Yeah, but Al, in this game, in this game, it was the last inning you're up by, you know, five, five nothing. Five, five, five. Yeah, it was a meltdown. It wasn't even a meltdown. It was like, what was it? No, it just, it just happened. I don't know. It was terrible. I don't know. They hit the ball all right, but the truth is that play. I think it did happen. Uh, that 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 rough call at first base. I think it happened already after AB. Had hit the home run. It was already five four. I think. Uh, I, th I thought it was there. I thought it to Meyer Safdie. It was like earlier in the inning when it was still five one. It was, but the truth is, yeah, you're, you're playing with a five one cushion. You want to win the game five one, five two, five nothing. But it was, I don't know. I think it was already five four. I think it was already five four. Yeah, yeah. Because it was already five four. Yeah, yeah. I think it was already five four. Yeah, yeah. I think it was already five four. Yeah, yeah. I think it was already five four. Yeah, yeah. I think it was already five four. Yeah, yeah. I think it was already five four. Yeah, yeah. I think it was already five four. Yeah, yeah. Tough. Exactly. It's, it's exactly. tough to point to that. Yeah. I don't know how we screwed that up. It's driving me crazy. Right. I'm usually like, I'm usually like the, I move on type of guy, but this I, I'm like, it's driving me nuts. So I love me. And it's having a bit going against the Hurricanes this week. I don't know how good they are, but, you know, it's a potential sweepable game if you come in there with a little mm -hmm. momentum. And we, 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 beat, we, we were about to beat a good team. And they are a good team. And then, I don't know how we, uh, I really don't know what we did wrong. All right, Albert, we, we got to cut you off. we got to go to commercial break, but thanks for calling, and uh, good luck against the Hurricanes. a good way to get back okay, into the... Okay, but don't count us out. We not, will not. Yeah, no, I mean, not you got it. We'll uh, see you next week. Oh, yeah, come back. Jimmy. Yeah, Bobby, yeah. what's going on, man? Uh, how are you, Mr. Malak? Uh, good to yeah, hear from you. Yeah, sorry about the connection. Uh, we're in the studio. We don't have to... Yeah, I know. I, uh, I was hearing some bombs going on in the background over there. Uh, what's happening over there? At, uh, I guess you guys are very happy being at uh, four and two right now with a nice come from behind victory. Definitely, you kidding? Uh, I've never had anything like that in my life. I was screaming the whole day that I couldn't believe what I just saw. You know? Now, I did like Vince Scully in the 1988 uh, World Series. <laughs> now, what what's the story with this call that they're talking about at first base? Was he safe or out? He, uh, he was so safe. He was out. Yeah, he was so out. 
He was out. <laughs> we're talking about which we said you can't even look at that in the middle of a five run inning yeah. but I, I just no, wanted to know if he was safe or out So who hit that ball? Who hit that ball to first base? Uh, Jackie Hamer was up after it was 5-4. So my exact Jackie Hamer was up after it was 5-4. He would have, Jackie Hamer should have been out. He would have saved. And then Deke Dwight forced him out of the second. All right. Chucky Dwight, Chucky Abadi hit the same one, whatever. All right, we have to cut you off. Your captain, the captain's on the other line uh, calling from a black tie affair. Coy, thank you. He's got a future in play-by-play. Uh, play. Yeah, Michael I think Kale. so. But you know what? The bad calls are <laughs> part of the game. They happen. Yeah. At least he's able to admit it was a bad call, and they yeah. benefited by it. It's a shame, but, you know, th there's bad calls in the World Series. Look right. at the guy with the perfect game. Yeah, yeah. Look at Don Deckinger against the Royals. <laughs> I mean, that's what happens in baseball in every yeah. sport. And you got to move on. Sometimes you get screwed. Sometimes you get I lucky. just wish we had a benefit of the uh, replay in your game. I know. I wish. Well... There's a few different <laughs> factors in my game that we didn't get a chance to go over. First of all, Joseph on my team caught the ball above his head on a line drive, and the ball sort of bounced around in his glove. Right. The rule is you're allowed to leave the second the ball hits your glove. So did he leave the second the ball hit his glove, or did he leave after? Because Joseph sort of bobbled the ball for a second. There are people that swear that he left early, and there are people that swear he didn't leave early. So it, it's... It's tough to say. I okay. wish we had instant replay. But. Yeah, for sure. All right, we got the call coming in. Maurice. Hello. Is that Maurice? Hey, Commissioner, how are you? All right, Maurice, sounds very noisy. Where are you over there? I, uh, I, uh, my busy schedule, I had to come out of a ceremony here to talk to you guys, so I just want you to know my agent's got to be talking to you tomorrow night. Oh, boy, I'll tell you, you got uh, more weddings than uh, anybody I know. Ooh. Hey, this is, a, this is a double overtime after the week we had of all in. I mean... Gotta admit, not bad. Let's do it. Not yeah. bad at all. Is that the greatest comeback you are ever part of in this league? Five nothing in the I last game. I have to tell you, NRJ. By the way, how are you doing, NRJ? I'm doing well. <laughs> that was one of the one of the best games I've ever witnessed, and I've been in this league. Uh, Bobby can attest probably over forty years. Yeah, too many, and, uh, too many. Yeah, to, too many. Time to hang them up. By the way. <laughs> say it again. What you guys say? Time to hang them up. Too many years. Forget about how many. Uh, relax. I'm not in the red and Moses category. Just yet. Relax. I can still hit that play. So uh, yeah, that was uh, that was an amazing comeback. Yeah, your team's uh, sitting very pretty now at four and two, uh, right? Uh, you know, a game behind uh, the first place. Um, you got to be very happy now. The trading deadlines this week. Uh, uh, we heard some rumblings. You, you were trying to acquire a frontline pitcher. Um, what, what other needs do you think your team has before the deadline? I have to tell you, our chemistry of my team, I don't really think I'm going to do anything. Uh, our team, our all-in organization is always on the phone. We always work the phone. Yeah, you're sponsored uh, by uh, Verizon. Uh, you know, we call you every minute. <laughs> but uh, I think I'm not going to be making any moves. I'm very happy with my team. The chemistry is unbelievable. I want to give a shout-out to this kid, Ralph Mazzuc. The guy came through with the tying hit uh, in the game uh, with two outs. And uh, I got to give this kid a shout out. He's smooth as it comes, silky smooth. He's going to be at least a fifth round and higher next Wow, year. wow, so wow. This guy is, and that's coming from me. But uh, my chemistry. Maurice, let me ask you a serious question, right? Because we, we, we spent a lot of time on this comeback, and it's an amazing comeback. Oh, yeah. All right, I didn't um, watch the show. Guys. Yeah, no, it's okay. Uh, let me ask you about this. You, you, you drafted a pitcher early, earlier than you wanted. 
And now there's confirmed reports that you were calling uh, Abe Cohen for Jeffrey Sacker. So, what's, are you not happy with your picture? Where you get this we got this information from Abe what? Cohen on the air 10 minutes ago. <laughs> Wow, wow. On the air, he said you called him at 1.04 p.m. today. You asked him for uh, Jeff Saka, and you heard the dial tone at 104 and a half. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I always, we always try to upgrade our team in any way. It doesn't mean that we're not happy with the picture that we have. We're going with him, but if I can always upgrade it with a, a caliber Hall of Famer like Jeffrey Saka, I'll always try to do it. But unfortunately, that's not going to work. They're building their team. I'm worrying about my team. Leo's my pitcher. He's my pitcher to stay. And after 6 o'clock Eastern Standard on this Friday, there's nothing to worry about because nobody's going anywhere. Okay. All right. Uh, we're going to uh, continue success the rest of the way. And thanks for calling hey. in. And uh, we, uh, we'd like to see you uh, hopefully uh, get more victories down the road. Thanks, Maurice. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Have a great Thank evening. you, too. Uh, so Maurice uh, calling in from a wedding very nice. Yeah, so. interesting that the wedding they agreed to have a viewing party yeah. at the ceremony. Yeah. They're watching I the don't show. Think the rabbi's happy about it. Yeah. Either the it's bride right. or the groom. But good the, luck to the bride and groom there, and thank yeah. you, Maurice, for calling in. Right, all so. in is on a high, by yeah. the way. These guys are all calling. Yeah, uh, the oh, bride well, and right friends and family so. line. Yeah. Rightly so. So now, um, you know, we've uh, got to get to the other games, but there are there were other games. There were other games also with issues. Now let's by the talk way. about uh, let's shoot over to Fireman's Field where you had the three and one um, exit one oh five right with red hot Max Yadid against uh, ice cold David Gindy in the Hurricanes uh, and <laughs> you know just that's uh, you know we predicted last week we thought it was going to be uh, a lights out uh, situation uh, for the you know, for the Hurricanes, we thought that it was, it was no shot. First game was not much of a contest. Max Yadid continued his dominating pitching, uh, giving up uh, one run, uh, you know, a, a game for the first the last four games. Um, and then David Gindy got injured, and his son Morris pitched game two. Um, but uh, we're going to get into that in detail. I got a lot to say about this. We're going to take a commercial, a commercial break, break. But right. I just got to leave you with this one statement. Yeah. If you're on the Hurricanes and your name is not John Eliezer, <laughs> you are being shopped. <laughs> I've spoken to every captain in the league. You're on the trading block if your name is not John Eliezer and you wear a Hurricanes jersey. Yeah. Back after the yeah, break. Back after the break. Okay.